shoes to fill, but it's just such a privilege to be here to introduce you today to our Digital Boost Alliance um, partner, Zealed. We have with us, obviously, uh, David Kelly, the CEO, and Jara um, Borman, who is the Head of Strategy for Zealed. It's uh, wonderful to be able to be here sharing this session um, with you today. I've had the privilege of working with Zealed and their team on um, the digital um, town project which we worked on which I know the, the team are looking at um, sharing a little bit later on during the presentations which we can have some questions at the end but um, I'll hand it over to you guys to get um, to share the great value that as a Digital Boost Alliance member Zeal brings to our economy New Zealand. Kia ora Diana and uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity we're uh, pleased to be here today. I think Jarrah's uh, got a presentation uh, that he is about to share on the screen now. Um, so you're you're not on the first slide, Jarrah. So if we can just go back to the very first slide. Oh, cool. I must good. have grabbed the wrong screen. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we'll just bring that up now. There we go. Sorry about that. False start. It's great. Thank you. Okay, great. So yeah, we just want to, uh, we're just going to spend some time telling you about a little bit about Zealed uh, today. So um, we're a company that really helps businesses to uh, transform themselves digitally and to thrive online. And so we, uh, and so just in terms of the presentation that we're going to go through today, we thought we'd start off by telling you a bit about who is Zealed as an organisation. Uh, we want to talk a lot today about our social co-papa um, and the social impact that we do, the social impact work that we do, um, as it's a really important part of our organisation. We're going to give you some examples of the uh, social mahi we do and how we help businesses and people to take the leap into digital, uh, particularly with a program that we've got called GEM. We then want to talk about uh, the costs long term with GEM, so how you can use GEM and what the costs are with GEM and talk about how do you apply for help through our GEM program. We then want to take you through what the process is once an application is accepted with GEM and also we want to cover off well what if you want help, zeal to help on a more commercial basis so outside of um, the GEM program. So I thought I'd start off firstly with telling you a little bit about who Zeal is as an organisation. So Zeal was formed in 2001 in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So we're a New Zealand, um, a company that is based in New Zealand, was founded in New Zealand, but we um, these days we have staff all over the world. So New Zealand's, um, we're New Zealand's largest and most experienced digital transformation agency for SMEs. So specialising in uh, micro, small and medium sized enterprises. One of the things that's um, maybe a little bit unusual, but a lot more common these days, we have approximately 100 staff uh, who all work from home. So they all work out of home and they're located all over the world. Um, but most of us are predominantly located in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and also the Philippines. To date, we've helped over 15,000 businesses transform themselves digitally. So we've had a lot of experience uh, with helping businesses uh, over the years. And we've also helped over 50,000 individuals transform themselves digitally. So helping them uh, learn new skills digitally and helping them uh, transform their businesses and so on. We've also facilitated over 2 billion in e-commerce revenue. So we've had a lot of experience in the uh, in this space. One of the interesting things about Zealed is there's actually two parts of our business. And so the first part is the commercial part where we have a group of digital transformation agencies and partner agencies. So partners that we work with. And this is um, where we work on a commercial for-profit basis. So that's one part of the business. But the second part of the business is actually what our, we call our social impact part. And so in our social impact part of the business, we have a range of not-for-profit programs to help uh, businesses, to help individuals, and to help communities cross the digital divide. So we help those businesses, those individuals, those communities that are on the wrong side of the digital divide to actually cross the digital divide and get digital. 
So today, um, in this presentation, we want to talk quite a lot about um, our social, the social impact part of the business. And so really, in terms of this part of the business, our, our key co-papa is to help businesses, individuals and communities cross the digital divide. That's what we're uh, really focused on with the social impact part of our business. And so really what that's about is to help them to start doing business online. That's where we, that's one of the sort of core things that we focus on uh, with this. We want to help them to start promoting or sell, selling their services, all their products online. And we want to help them start engaging with their customers and prospective customers through a website, through e-commerce, through social media through digital marketplaces, through email, instant messaging, all these different tools that you see in digital. But ultimately, um, we also want to help people to thrive. So we want to help them to thrive both on a commercial and on a personal level um, through digital. So I'm going to hand this next part of the presentation over to Chara, and he's going to take you through some examples of the uh, social mahi that we currently do. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you, David. Um, so yeah, we've uh, the, we've got some some idea there around who Zeld is and and, and some of our, our purpose there uh, around uh, the social impact work that we do. One of our biggest programs in the space that's been running since uh, that actually was was developed in the middle of the first lockdown in 2020 is our Get e-commerce movement or the Gym program. We're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, later on uh, in the presentation, just around how you can uh, get involved in that that program and and what it means to you as a as a, as a business owner. Uh, but one of our first customers uh, for a gym site was Robin's Cottage, based here in Tauranga, um, and she's had a phenomenal um, impact on her business um, as a result of this. Not just selling online and creating e-commerce revenue, but the patronage to a store increased significantly as a result of having a presence online, being accessible, being found, uh, and it's had a really phenomenal impact on her business. And so that's just a nice little quote from her as well around the, the process she went through to get online, and there's an example of her, her GEM website there as well. So Jim was one of the main focuses of the Y Power project that we got involved with. Um, Diana was uh, critical in helping set this uh, this project up, and we were we were proud to be part of it as a, as part of our Digital Boost Alliance membership as well, helping create the most digital town in Aotearoa, which was Y Power. So we were there on the day, and we helped about fourteen businesses actually get online, get um, e-commerce capable websites, uh, and get them online so that uh, they could they could start taking part in the digital economy. And and it was it was fantastic to be there actually on the day for the launch of that as well, and go around and see some of these business owners who, who had been dreaming of having a, a website for years and had never really kind of got to that point where they could they could get something online and and Jim was able to do that for them so it was uh, it was pretty cool it's very cool day um, one of our, our projects that we're working on at the moment, which is of, of quite some quite substance, is, is a partnership that we've got with BNZ uh, for the Digital Clusters Initiative. Now, one of the things that we found with our GEM program, which has been running for two years, is we can help individual businesses get, get online, start transacting with, uh, with e-commerce, but it's actually really hard for those businesses to then, then be found. And so one of the concepts that we came up with um, at Zeald was to, to actually bring a group of businesses from, from whether that's from a, from a region, a specific town uh, or, or, or particular industry and, and bring them all together, provide them all the e-commerce sites, but then roll them up into a, into a marketplace where, where customers uh, would, would go and repeat visit and, and discover um, products and services within that group. And so that was the, uh, and then when we, we met with BNZ as part of the Digital Boost Alliance and, and realized there was some real synergy with the economic clustering model uh, that they were looking to deploy in New Zealand to help improve uh, regional, um, uh, the regional economies in New Zealand. So this project's been in design for a couple of years and uh, or for a year or so, and uh, just, just recently we announced our three pilot groups going into, uh, into this initiative. Uh, and so we've got a, a group of baby product manufacturers in New Zealand who will have um, eco-friendly products for, 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 for new families and, and sorry, not new families, new, new mums. Um, uh, then we've got a, a collective of artists based around the Matatua Waka here in Toronga Moana. Um, and, and so they'll be looking to, to put a whole bunch of artists online and help them kind of um, uh, achieve uh, you know, more revenue through through selling their, their artwork on that platform. And then we've also got the Central Otago Wine Growers Association as well, looking to bring a whole bunch of um, uh, vineyards and wineries together there um, and sell through through one of our uh, marketplaces as well. So that's, a, that's a, fin a fantastic project that we're working on at the moment that I'm very excited about, you can probably tell. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, really proud of the work that we're doing there. And, and over the next 
probably five to six months, you, you may have the opportunity to start buying from some of these, uh, these marketplaces as well. And we don't just work on a social impact uh, point of view in New Zealand. We also work, uh, we have some of our team based uh, offshore in the Philippines, and we do a lot of work there as well. And so we've been helping Indigenous female entrepreneurs in the Davao region in the Philippines, uh, working with New Zealand Foreign Affairs Trade and Aid Program, uh, going to go see over the Davao City Chamber of Commerce um, and the Department of Trade and Industry, National Commission on Indigenous People, and the, the, the city government of Davao as well, to really kind of unlock the potential uh, for female entrepreneurs in this region by actually giving them uh, e-commerce um, sites and, and the ability to start transacting and selling their goods outside of the area. So the idea uh, here being that it will improve uh, economic outcomes within the region and make a really big difference for each, uh, the individual women that are looking to take part in this program as well. Um, so, so that's something we're really excited about as well. Nice photo there if, uh, if you're on there. Um, so yeah, we'll get to our GEM program, talk you through a little bit more, because I think this is something that's really relevant to potentially the businesses that are, that are on uh, the call today. Um, so I'll hand back to David to talk through uh, about our GEM program. Okay, so as uh, Jarrah said earlier uh, in the presentation, GEM's a, a, a social impact program that we launched in 2020, in early 2020. And uh, it's really designed to help remove some of the key barriers to digital. So in our experience with uh, working with uh, many different uh, small and medium-sized businesses, we found that the key barriers to business owners are uh, going digital. Uh, there's really three of them. The first one's cost, the second one's knowledge, and the third one's time. So uh, cost, meaning that uh, for businesses to go digital, there's a risk around cost. There's a risk around investing uh, some critical capital or it might be capital that they don't have, money they don't have, and then it not working. Uh, the knowledge barrier is not knowing what to do and, uh, and what, what's the right thing to do. And then the time barrier is just the lack of time. So many uh, small business owners and uh, are just very time poor. They're maxed out. And so one of the things we do with GEM is we work to minimize and eliminate these barriers where, wherever it's possible. So with our GEM program, what we do is we provide full-featured digital commerce solutions um, to businesses in certain industry segments at no cost. And the reason we do that is to help them to embrace digital and really take the leap uh, into, into digital. And so the sectors that we currently uh, support and work with are food and beverages, retail, wholesale distribution. So what we mean by wholesale distribution is where you have a business that is dealing with other businesses on a business to business basis rather than on a business to consumer basis. Uh, so service businesses, and then also charities and not-for-profits. So with our GEM program, um, existing businesses who are in those segments in those, in those segments above there, or individuals who are looking to start a business in one of those segments, what they can do is they can apply for our help. And if their application is successful, we then provide them with a best practice digital commerce solution at no cost. So in each of those segments, what we've done is we've developed a best practice solution for that particular segment. And so when someone applies to our G program for help, we provide them with a solution in that segment at no cost. And so we look as part of that program to address these key barriers to digital. So we look to address the cost barrier by actually de-risking it. So by removing the cost barrier, the risk of going digital is now gone uh, because someone is not placed in a position where they're investing the last of their capital or the very limited capital that they have in going digital with the risk that it might not work. So we take away that cost barrier. We look to address the knowledge barrier by providing a solution that is pre-configured. So we've already developed a solution that is tailored for a food and beverage business or a solution that's tailored for a retail business or a wholesale business or a service business. So we really uh, look to minimize that uh, knowledge uh, barrier by ensuring the solution is already developed in a best practice way. And then the final barrier is the time barrier. So we look to addre address that and to uh, reduce that time barrier by actually helping you to uh, actually get 
the solution online. So there's many uh, solutions out there that are DIY, right, where you can go online and you can do it all yourself. Uh, but with a gem solution, it's not a DIY solution. It's a solution where we configure the solution for you and we help get your content and your information loaded up into the solution. You have the ability to manage that solution on an ongoing basis past that point if you want to, uh, but you don't have to go and do it all yourself. So that's the um, that's a bit of a I guess a summary of our gym program, and then I'll hand it back to Jarrah, who's going to take you through uh, some of the other details. Cool. Yeah. So the, the 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 main thing really. Yeah. So as David said, there's those three big barriers, but cost is such a big part of it, especially when we designed this program. Uh, we we're kind of coming. We, we didn't really know where things were going to end up with the in the first lockdown, so we designed this so that it was that it was almost a, a no-brainer for businesses. If you wanted to get online, you could do so because there are no upfront costs with Gem, right? None whatsoever. Um, there are no monthly or annual costs for all of these customers for the first 12 months. So essentially this gives every business that wants it the ability to get online, get start, start transacting and, and start selling their products and services for 12 months to kind of, it's almost subsidizing their, their business model to get them online and, and get started in this space. Um, Keeping in mind, though, that there are some uh, third-party costs that, that are not necessarily related to Zealed uh, when, when it comes to transacting online. So this will be your credit card fees or your buy now, pay later payment systems and, and those sort of processing systems that are required to transact online. Um, you will need to, to get one or, or, or many of those, um, but uh, the actual cost to Zealed uh, is absolutely, there's no cost to Zealed for the first 12 months. Um, following 12 month period, we're hoping that at this point you've started to get some sales through the, the website starting to deliver some good value to you, but we still want to make sure that there's no, the, the costs are not onerous for any business that's, that's just starting out in this space. So for an e-commerce solution uh, where you're selling your products directly to customers online, 2% uh, of the revenue through that digital solution uh, goes to Zeal to help cover the costs for hosting and support, uh, and that is capped at the normal hosting arrangement uh, for an e-commerce website of 90 97 plus GSC per month. So essentially, the, 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 the whole idea here is that the, the costs on a monthly basis are continued to be subsidized as you still grow and then capped at the normal fee that you would pay if you were to be running an e-commerce site. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty incredible offer. Um, and for a solution that you're just set up to generate inquiries where you're not necessarily selling through your website, um, then there's just that um, 999 plus GST per month fee that comes in after 12 months to cover the, the hosting and support subscription that we have with all of these, uh, these gem websites. So it's important to note that covers the hosting of the website uh, and it also covers access to our support team as well who can help you uh, manage that website and make the very best out of the the, the tool that you're being provided through this program. Um, and at any point, there's no obligation. You, you, if you wish to discontinue uh, using a, a gym website at any point, you can do so. Just, just let us know. Um, there's a 30-day kind of shutdown process, essentially, but you can get an export of all of your products and service, uh, products and all of your, your customer information as well. Um, and so there's no obligation to, to continue with the program after 12 months if you don't want to, right? So there are, that we, as, as David said, I don't think we could have de-risked it anymore <laughs> um, because there is, there is no risk whatsoever to giving it a go and getting online. And that, that's our goal really here is that if we can help businesses take advantage of that digital economy, uh, it's going to create a much more vibrant business ecosystem for everybody to operate in. Uh, and that's, that's kind of our, our vision uh, for, this, for this program. So if you're interested in the GEM, GEM program, how do, you, how do you apply? It's really simple. Um, you can just go to zeal.com forward slash GEM and fill out the application form. All right, so there's an initial application form that you fill out, just registers your interest and selects the industry vertical that you're in, uh, which will determine which one of those vertical solutions that, that, that David was talking about uh, applies to you. Um, or you can go just go to zeal.com and click on the gym, gym button on the homepage. Um, both of those options are available to you. Uh, there is, um, yeah, once the, once the process uh, is kicked off and your application is accepted, um, you will need to supply us with information about your products and services and so that we can actually set up and configure the site for you. Um, we can't just make that up. Uh, often we can get some detail from, from your social media pages if you have them, but ultimately you'll need to, to tell us what you want to sell and, and, and what your, your products and services are. And we've got a really clear uh, content collection process, some forms that you can fill out, uh, some product spreadsheets you can fill out as well. But then we do all the loading of the website for you. So we'll create the, uh, the um, uh, 
fill out the templates, uh, publish the website, and then provide you uh, with the login as well so that you can, you can keep it up to date yourself. Um, we do have a support process going through that and um, our GEM support team are amazing. They've been helping so many small businesses over the last couple of years go through this process. There's someone there to help you if you get stuck. Um, and, uh, and, and we understand sometimes it can be a bit daunting if you're not online at the moment, uh, it can be a, a bit of a process. Um, and so we, we're here to help make that easy for you. We're gonna de-risk that, that time, uh, time factor as well. All right. So um, yeah, and so Jim, Jim works for quite a lot of businesses out there. Um, it's, it's, it's something that, that's been incredibly popular. We've accepted over a thousand applications for that program. Um, and, and we're continuing to do it as part of our commitment to the Digital Boost Alliance. But if you need something that's a bit more complex than that, then we, we do obviously have our, our, our transformation agencies, which are available to help uh, people on a commercial basis. And we have a lot of clients that work with us quite happily knowing that a proportion of their spend with us goes into funding and helping uh, us run our social impact programs and assisting that next small business get online and get onto the right side of the digital divide. So we're happy to assist in any way we can uh, through, through one of our partner agencies if you need something on a more professional, uh, higher, higher level um, on a commercial basis. And so uh, within that context, uh, we are able to do a, a full range of, of website solutions. We're, we're platform agnostic, so we work with our own technology, uh, which is called Zest, but we also work with all the leading content management systems as well, um, like WordPress, uh, WooCommerce, Shopify, uh, et cetera. Um, we also have our own digital uh, marketplace technology, which is powering our digital clusters initiative. That's quite unique, uh, being able to deploy whole marketplaces where vendors can log in and manage their listings. Um, that's, a, that's a really powerful tool that we have at our disposal. Uh, we also have our own integration uh, software and work with other integration tools to help connect business software to create uh, efficiencies and, and really help businesses go through um, those kind of growing pains of, of, of adopting digital tools and having data in lots of different places. We help, help smooth that out. Um, we also have automation tools as well for automating customer interactions and business processes, helping, helping dial up um, uh, basically your, your, your margins potentially or, or helping get ready for, for scaling and entering other, other markets. And we also have a really advanced range of, um, of digital marketing services as well. Everything from landing pages and search engine optimization, social media, what else we've got their paid digital campaigns, email marketing, marketing automation. We've got some fantastic chatbot software. Uh, and we also do conversion rate optimization and, and plenty more as well. There's a huge, I couldn't really go through everything uh, that we that we cover in that digital marketing space because it's um, there's a lot there, but uh, suffice to say that we, we, we help businesses generate results in that online space uh, using, using those tools. So if you're interested in any of our professional services or on a commercial basis, then you can get in touch with us via zeal.com, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, there's a phone number there as well. Uh, or if you, if you like to um, use that, some of the new tools, we've actually got a chat bot that you can talk to and, and get more information or, or request a free strategy session uh, with one of our strategists as well. And you can access that either in, in Facebook through Facebook Messenger or, or directly on the chat bot on our website as well. So that's, that's us, Diana, that's our, that's our presentation. Oh, that was wonderful. Thank you so much, David and Jared, for sharing that with me. I could have interjected at a hundred um, places. I we were going through a couple of times. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, no, I've got, I won't oh. say anything. <laughs> oh, no, honestly. Well, I know um, firsthand, actually, how wonderful it is to work with the Zeal team. I'm a large um, advocate and ambassador for them, um, working together with um, Jara and his resources around the globe on um, the digital town project, which we looked at Waipa as a small town to actually run a proof concept to see how we could actually work with small businesses and bring together and bring visibility to a, a thoroughfare town. Um, we started off, in all honesty, looking at the business and running a Google search and discovered seven businesses. Uh, by the end of a six-week project, um, the benefits of digital created visibility for 133 businesses with, um, as in Jara shared there, the depth of 14 businesses. In only phase one, by the way, um, the team worked end-to-end -end tirelessly to actually develop those 14 websites. That was huge to be able to work with very small businesses in a very small town to actually help them bring to fruition something they've been thinking about for quite some time. Um, the team, I can definitely say it was absolutely effortless. The processes are so well designed. Um, the support was there at every part. They definitely, I totally agree, had de-risked um, you know, all of the requirements through their experience with working with a number of small businesses, in all honesty.
today. Um, and as we know, with working with small businesses and helping them in that digital um, transformation space, crossing that uh, digital divide, they actually need a lot of hand-holding and um, the team at Zeld totally understand that. No question was too, too small and no question was too big. Um, I think one of the biggest barriers in all of the um, conversations that I had was what's going to happen in 12 months if I just don't feel like I can continue managing this. There was no barrier to that. There was no um, requirement for them to continue with anything if it didn't work. So yeah, if, um, our support team are also available online to help um, any of you as a user if you're looking at wanting to get started in the space. The GEM project is phenomenal. And the pre-made templates, which um, we obviously worked with uh, Jara and his team on, they actually had covered every touch point. So from a UX perspective, which if you're not aware of that is, it's a user experience. It actually, they were designed to, not only for an external user to follow a very intuitive pathway, but also from an internal user to actually develop and build their own template and manage it ongoing. The um, intu intuitive backends are absolutely awesome for you to actually manage that yourselves. Um, yeah, so that was my experience with the team. Um, we also since then have got um, the wider area of Waipawa, which is actually Central Hawke's Bay, which is a district in its own of four towns. They are all looking at following that same blueprint and are in the stages of transitioning um, and bringing their business online, which is an ongoing project now. So it's something that doesn't stop. There'll be new businesses starting all the time. And um, we have built together with the Central Hawke's Bay District Council um, an ambassador on the ground there to actually help the businesses work through this process with Zeld. And it's just been an absolute pleasure in all honesty. So that's probably enough from me on the um, on the digital small town divide. One thing that I'm really interested in knowing a little bit more about from you guys, I hope you don't mind me asking, is your incredible initiative around the cluster learning. Um, I think this is a fantastic approach to actually bring all like-minded in one industry together and actually all explore from my assumption the same amount of questions that everyone has and so that everyone starts to learn um so you, you basically if you think about it this way you have one question that everyone wants to know but you can actually answer it at a very large scale is that sort of the concept that it's all about yeah uh, maybe if i can talk to this a little bit more diana but I think one of the things we've got in New Zealand is we're small, right? And we, we have an awful lot of uh, small businesses in New Zealand. And we're also, uh, we, we have the um, muck of distance as well. So one of the incredible things about clustering, though, is it allows small to become medium or possibly even big. And what I mean by that is by actually, um, by a whole bunch of small businesses starting to work together in a cluster, they start to have all these benefits of economies of scale. They have the ability to be able to um, extend their market reach. They have the ability to be able to benefit from um, by working together from having better rates on a logistics level. There's all, all these sort of benefits that start to come to the fore. And so that's what we're uh, really looking to do with uh, encouraging clustering is by getting these businesses to work together. Um, they, they often what it's talked about, there's a, a fancy term called co cooperation. So the cooperating on one level, but competing on still on one level as well. And so it's been able to work in this sort of state of cooperation to actually get all these benefits while still recognizing that they do compete on a certain level as well. So I think there's just huge opportunity for New Zealand. Um, clustering is something that has worked very successfully uh, all around the world, but hasn't been embraced on a very widespread basis within New Zealand. And so I think if we really, if it starts to become far greater part of the DNA of our business culture, uh, then the opportunities are huge. Oh, that's amazing. I hadn't heard of that term, co-opetition, but I actually really like it. It says a lot, doesn't it? It's awesome. I'll tell you another area which I feel our users would love to know more about because I thought it was a fantastic initiative of Jim. And um, one of the areas which I was not aware of was Zeld is the incredible social um, 
impact that you make as an organisation um, globally is actually an absolute credit to you and your team. I think you just do a wonderful job in all honesty. Um, I definitely think another area which I really have tried to help with the new businesses that we've been talking about is actually your GEM Academy, is actually where you've got your, um, you're actually helping not only help people get online and uh, do business, but you're also educating them around what is involved in going online and how to do it so they can actually become empowered and enabled to do that themselves. Is that something you're um, happy to talk more about today? Sure, or maybe I'll let, let Jara talk to that one. Yeah, cool, no problem. So yeah, so one of the, it, it's kind of um, a really important part of our, our, our kind of strategy and thinking when it came to the GEM program um, was, was, was how do we make sure that people can actually use these tools that we have? So the GEM uh, program provides tools for business, but there's also gonna need to be a, a corresponding lift in the skill set across New Zealand if we really wanna embrace digital effectively. And so that's, that's where we came up with the GEM Academy. Uh, which is a work-based integrated learning platform, which allows people to, to sign up to different uh, various intakes. And once they're in that program, they can they can kind of commit to as little or as much time as they, they want to each week. And they get the opportunity to work on, um, on actual um, websites and, and filling them out and loading them and becoming really familiar with, with how these tools uh, operate so that they um, actually have real hands-on experience working with them. And then their, their work is, is um, checked and, and, and they get feedback from, from our more senior people as well. So the idea really is that at the same time as we're, we're lifting the, the, the businesses themselves by providing e-commerce solutions and, and tools. We're also helping uh, upskill people right across the country as well um, in, those, in those digital skills that are required to operate them. Um, and so that's a, a critical part of how the GEM program works, having that GEM Academy running alongside it as well. Thank you, Jared. And um, another area that I wasn't aware that you did, which I think is a phenomenal opportunity for our businesses, and um, I'll actually also share with our customer support team, um, and that is that you have your uh, free strategy available for small businesses. I mean, that, like, can you talk to me about how many more have been engaged in that and the benefits that you see regularly that comes out of those sessions? Yeah, I can take that if you like, David. Yeah, so um, yeah, so the, the, that's a that's a key part of how we we operate is is that um, we 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 kind of work directly with businesses to understand their the opportunities for them um, by embracing digital transformation. And so we have a free strategy session, and we've got a team of uh, digital business strategists uh, that work with. Um, uh, companies right throughout New Zealand and, and, and internationally as well, kind of sit down and really get to grips with how that business operates right now and, and how could they extend themselves? How could they operate if they were to start adopting digital tools that are available? That could be anything from, from quite a wide range of um, websites and marketing and integration and automation. And we, we actually design a, a strategy for them um, off the back of that strategy session, which they can choose to, to pick up with us or with, with any uh, anyone else as well. There's no obligation there, uh, but ultimately, sitting down and really working directly with a business to understand how they operate and, and what, what, how they could operate with, with these tools is, is, is quite an amazing process to go through with businesses. I do it uh, often myself, actually do those strategy sessions. And I, I just, I really get a kick out of going in and, and understanding how these different businesses in New Zealand work uh, and how, how they could really accelerate their growth using the, the tools that are available because that tool set grows so quickly. It's like every day there's something new that you could be using. And so even a really established business can, can benefit from those sort of uh, sessions as well, because it's pretty hard for a business owner working in the business to say across all the things that are happening in that digital space. And when you're seeing the kind of growth that we're seeing at the moment of e-commerce revenue growing 20 to 30% year on year um, and accelerating at the rate it is, uh, it's pretty hard for those businesses to keep up. And so that's why we have that mechanism there for a free strategy session so that they can understand what's working now for other businesses and how could they apply it to theirs. That's amazing, Jara. So what you don't know is I've got a new little plan underway. Yeah. <laughs> and we just might be taking one of those sessions um, live online to help businesses um, to do that together. Yeah. So I'll be talking to you further about that, Jara. So that's right, wonderful. Cool. I mean, as in, you all know, quite often is when you're working so hard in your business, you don't quite often realise the repetitive actions which are currently being done at scale within your organisation. And by when you stop and look at it from, um, like, looking at it from a bird's eye view down, sometimes it really helps you understand that there are huge opportunities for um, automation in a lot of those spaces and how you can actually create efficiencies and actually help um 
help your individuals and your business grow and actually understand the benefits of a digital in a business, that it's not actually a scary place. And as everyone, when they start that journey, there's always an element of fear there, isn't there? And it's about when you work together with them and support them through that process. It's um, really empowering for all involved, really, isn't it? It's a great it's a great transition to be um, involved with. I love that also. Um, another, I've got a couple of questions here, which I'm just going to ask you. And that is, um, tell me, how crucial do you consider digital transformation as for the future of small businesses in New Zealand today? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just absolutely critical. I mean, the future is clearly digital. And, uh, and so there's just so many benefits of going digital. It, it does future-proof you. You've got all these opportunities to increase your, your efficiencies, your, your productivity uh, within uh, your business. We've already talked about how it, can, uh, it has this ability to just sort of make the world a lot smaller place. So suddenly in the past where it was uh, the, the idea of doing business, um, you know, in offshore markets was quite... Uh, quite challenging uh, it's so much easier uh, with digital so digital sort of lays this foundation that you've then got all these opportunities that you can leverage off uh, following um, that point yeah. it's amazing, just like, it like... sorry, I just, do you mind if I just add there um, I also yeah. think what a really critical thing that we've seen in the last two years is that it builds resilience as well right so we've just been through just I don't even, I'm not even going to try and describe it, but we all know what we've, we're going, been through and still going through. But what we've seen is those businesses that have adopted really robust digital technology have been able to trade through and bounce back far more quickly from any restrictions placed on trading. And so that resilience piece is really, really critical. It's, 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 it's going to set you up so that if there is anything else that happens like that in the future, you're, you're ready to trade through and, and operate effectively and, 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 and it not impact you quite so much. Yeah. And I mean, not even talking about from a trade perspective, just from an operations perspective, like, um, you know, that transition, David, which you mentioned in your business, that all of your staff now currently work remotely. I mean, I that's one of the things I love about um, digital technology myself is um, I, work, I live in Hawke's Bay and I'm able to work all around the world um, with just using digital tools. And, you know, that we can connect today on Zoom and all the other sort of um, collaborative um, applications that are available the connection that it provides. And I know that everyone's so sick of probably hearing that, but when you actually see it applied in your day-to-day -day operations and the benefits that it brings to you and your family, really, it's um, just a phenomenal resource. That's one of the reasons I'm passionate about, um, obviously, digital transformation as well. It, it is incredible, isn't it? Like if we just go back, um, you know, 24 months or something like that and what's become quite normalised now, uh, even back 24 months like some of this the concepts that we would be able to work from home and would be really effective in doing that um like so many more people get it now but 24 months ago it was just that was radical you know like that was way out there to be um to be even thinking about that and so yeah it's awesome i totally agree <laughs> And that, and if you think about that huge distance that we've all travelled within a really short period of time, I'm so excited to see, you know, where their future is going to um, end up. I remember at one stage saying to Francis, oh, imagine if we could teleport in a um, virtual um, standing, free Francis. I said, I think that'd be fantastic. I'm going to look into how we can do that. And the great thing is, is, you know, those sorts of things are a reality now. We can actually look at um, using artificial intelligence and all of those incredible other developments in the space to actually help create new experiences in that space, isn't it? It's awesome. Yeah, they are working on teleportation too. They've, <laughs> they've managed to uh, get a few atoms, you know, teleported. Uh, I can't, can't, I think they've got up to a couple of kilometres now, so <laughs> in distance. So they're, they're working on it. Oh, it's so exciting. It's awesome. Hey, I have got another couple of questions here, which I know people would love to know the answers of. And um, so I know you've touched on a lot of the risks that you've actually um, identified and actually worked through um, answers for in your business. But the question here is, what is the biggest challenge and the biggest opportunity to building and thriving digital economy in New Zealand? What do you consider they would be? I think our, our biggest challenge is really not having, not leaving a portion of our people behind as this transition to digital happens uh, like we can't afford to have a, a whole section of of our people of our businesses of our economy left on the wrong side of the digital divide like that would 
that would be um, very painful. And I think that, so that's our, our biggest challenge is, uh, is to ensure that that doesn't happen. And our biggest opportunity is, is if we are successful in making sure that doesn't happen and we bring everyone along and we get them over the digital divide, we get these businesses digital, then we've already talked about all the upside of digital. And so if we can do that, the potential for our, our economy, the potential for, for our nation is enormous. Um, so that's kind of, um, I think, both the challenge and the opportunity is all sort of encapsulated in that one issue. I mean, there's other ones as well, but that's the kind of key thing that I see. I mean, actually, it's interesting today that today is obviously our Digital Boost Alliance um, session on on Digital Boost because um, the Digital Boost Alliance, for those that have attended and aren't 100% certain of what that actually means, it's an incredible group of organisations that have actually pledged commitments um, from their business to New Zealand small businesses to actually help them with that digital divide, help them with their services, with their products. And, but I think the main value they really bring is their huge experience, which they've had at working with um, businesses. And as a new shed, you've obviously just celebrated your 21st birthday at um, Zealed. (laughs) Hope you did something nice with the team to celebrate the incredible impact you've made during that time, um, David and Jara. It's just, um, it's great to see the work you've done to date and the continued work that you have planned for the future. And um, just, yeah, the the biggest credit I feel to you as a team, which I I know you're all extremely humble, but you don't share, and that is actually the um, social impact that you do with your GEM program, um, obviously offshore, and also with your GEM Academy and helping people understand and learn about your dig- your tools that are available and the strategies and stuff that you have in place. I have one last question, which I'd like to talk um, quickly jump into, and that is a top tip for a small business owner to get and stay involved with the digital economy. Um, I'd love one each from you both before um, we wind up our session today. Okay, well, maybe I'll go first. My one is, uh, I just think um, you've got to take the leap. You know, there's you've got to leap into the unknown and you have to do it. Continually, I mean, even with us being in this space and and eat, drink, sleep digital, um, we still have to take the leap continually. And uh, whenever you take that leap, it's there's a, it's it's pretty scary um, on on the other side of the leap. But once you've done it, you know, suddenly you you wonder what you were scared about in the first place. So uh, I think that's it's really important that you get into that mindset. Like I've I've got to take the leap. I've got to take the leap, and and I've got to. It's got to come a part of how I'm doing business. So that that would be my key tip. It's not some kind of tech tip. It's an attitude, really, that I think is so important. I totally agree with you, David. We have a little saying here at the Mind Lab, and there's the world rewards the curious, and um, I just absolutely love that because I know we're all curious, and um, I know that um, sometimes it can be scary place and a lonely place being curious and diving deep but the great thing is with the likes of Zeal, the other Digital Boost Alliance members and Digital Boost, we are all here to support um, New Zealand small businesses in transforming at any stage, like at a very little stage or at a big stage. And one of the other things which I feel that digital really enables is um, for you to build a community, for you to build a community of people that are on the same stage as where you are at. And it's incredible using the tools that are available and actually even posing a question and the amount of support that you actually get online from people that you wouldn't even know existed, which actually builds an entire new network for you is another phenomenal benefit, isn't it, of um, digital tools. So Jarrett, what's yours? I'm very keen to hear. Well, so mine mine is kind of similar. It's about mindset, right? And so that is that that digital is not, it's not a destination that you get to, it's a a journey, right? And so getting online is not something that you just tick a box and you get done. Uh, And so sitting back and just waiting until you have everything perfect and everything right before you take that first step is never going to, that's not the right frame for it. It's about taking a little step and then taking another step because there'll always be another thing that you can do online to improve and get more um, results and, and get more customers. And so it's about learning to, to walk 
and to, to, to take that next step and keep walking. It's a, it's a journey. And as, if once you start down that path, you're going to find uh, so many incredible things online that you can do. Um, and and uh, the results that you get for your business are, are often phenomenal and far and exceed what, what you would imagine it to be. But it's important that it's it's not a box ticking exercise. It's something that you do and embrace and, and, and constantly learn and change. So. Well, and um, one of our people online today is actually want to know already how they can actually jump out and get started with you. So I'll be arranging an introduction, Jarrah, to you and your team after this. But I can't thank you enough for your time today, for sharing um, with us at Digital Boost and across all of our uh, live uh, chat platforms, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, which we've had people engaging and watching, which has been wonderful. And um, yeah, just the incredible mahi that you do. Um, we're extremely grateful as an economy. Um, yeah, and we really look forward to working with you in the future. So thank you so much, guys, and wish you. Oh, last question. What have you got involved in for Tech Week? Anything there you've got to share yeah. that we've got opportunities for people to connect with you as well? Yeah, we've got a couple of uh, good uh, sessions where we're going to be talking a bunch more about our digital cluster um, initiative that we're doing with BNZ. So we've got a, um, a session on Tech TV where we're going to be having a, a good in-depth dis discussion around that and what's going on there. Uh, we also have a session where we're talking about uh, just the, the Digital Boost Alliance and, uh, and what we're currently doing there and what we also would like to do more of really in that area. So uh, yeah, keep a look out. Oh, that's wonderful. And for those of you that don't know or haven't heard of Tech Week, just jump on Tech Week NZ and um, you'll just see all of the incredible opportunities that are available um, for you to find out more about what's happening in um, tech in New Zealand. So thank you very much, uh, David and Jara. So appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, thank you for our members that have asked a whole lot of questions and we'll come back to you on that. And we look forward to hearing more from you next week in um, Tech Week. Have a wonderful week, team. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Diana. It's our pleasure. Bye -bye. Cheers.